Hey, good day, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of our Working Together series with our friends at Nativ from YPS, uh, where we're doing uh, a live Q&A session with Rabbi Karma Ingber, who's uh, out of Atlanta, Georgia area. And uh, it's just such an honor to have a rabbi answer our questions. So if you have any questions, type them in the chat room. I will make sure I get it, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. I'll try and get it to the rabbi. Uh, but we're joined uh, by many people in the uh, Zoom room, on uh, Nativ's Zoom room, uh, which Rod Bryant's not going to be with us today. So let's just jump right in and see it, see how the rabbi's doing. So, uh, yeah. Hi, hi, everybody. How are we doing? Doing well? Good, good, good. So I want to just, I, I'm going to say again a little, as we've been there, I say a short idea, and then we'll talk about that, anything else you want to talk about. So I, I want to just give a little bit of a discussion about one of the seven Noahide laws, which seems obvious, but in this current state that's going on in America and in the world, I think we need to reiterate this uh, and realize the flaws of what's going on. There's one of the seven, seven Noahide commandments seems fairly obvious. The idea of don't steal seems fairly obvious. Yeah, of course it seems, but there is, Right now in America, uh, 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 another pandemic, which is the theft pan pandemic, you know, uh, breaking, what do they call it, grab, uh, break and grab, I've got they have the terms for it, people are, are stealing left and right. And I, and I, and I want to sort of get into the flaw of the understanding that is the root of theft and God willing, if we understand this, this will give a deeper understanding to what we have to do in respecting other people's boundaries. So let's understand something. When you read the story in the, in the Torah, the story of Joseph. So what's the story of jo Joseph is 17 years old. He sold into slavery into Egypt, uh, as you read the story there. And it says that the wife of his master was trying to seduce him. The wife of Potiphar, day in and day out, she was trying to seduce him. The Talmud records she changed her clothes multiple times every day, did everything she can. Apparently, she was beautiful. She was trying to seduce him. He's 17 years old. He, he, he and, and he's lost in the world of slavery. The world of slavery is a world where um, it, it's such a negative space. We talked about it a little bit. By, we talk about Passover, but but the Talmud says that a slave starts to like things being what's called hefker, uh, uh, um, uh, not not they, they become wild and 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 lewd because there's they, they don't have a sense the slave of this is mine I work to make this because one of the terrible things about slavery is the lack of ownership of what's yours, so he's like in the slave world and now his master is trying, she's trying to seduce him day and day out. He's 17 years old. And now he has to resist. Now, if you look at the words in the text, it's very strange because you would think he would say, it's not right. You know, I'm a religious person. It's, it's, it's adultery. It's terrible. That's what I would think he would say. But if you look at the words, he didn't say that. He said, listen, the master of this house entrusted me with everything. Okay, I'm in charge. He trusts me with everything. I'm, no one in this house runs things more and has the trust more and access to all of his possessions other than me, except for you, as you are his wife. Now, when you, <laughs> when you hear him saying that, it kind of sounds like he, he's talking about, like, you know, uh, not this illicit relation problem, which it would have obviously been, but he's saying, listen, I can't do it because there are things that are mine, things that are not mine. And he, he trusted me. And how could this terrible thing of, of, to, of to go and to take you where you're not, you've not been given to me. What is he saying? What's just of understanding? And this is what Paul wants to hear. Yosef saw the world in the way it really is. And that is the idea that everyone has what is theirs and it belongs to them. You do not want something that belongs to someone else because it's not you. Let me explain this. There was a, there, there was a, uh, a great rabbi named Pinchas Ben Yoyer and he had a donkey. 
And it says they gave his donkey once food that was not tithed. The donkey wouldn't eat it. How is that possible? A very smart donkey. Donkey would donkey knew what was he could eat and what he can't eat. No, the answer was the donkey was an extension of this great rabbi. It was his property. And therefore the donkey actually functioned in this higher way because it was owned by this great sage. The property that you have and you have been given are things that are meant for you. And what's not meant for you is not yours. You have no connection to it. Yosef was saying to her, I I, I can't even see you. You're not my world. If a man's wife is his wife, it's his wife. It's her husband. What does that have to do with me? If you own something, that's yours. That's your part. If a person goes and acquires something inappropriately, illegally, it's not just that they're doing this terrible act of stealing. They're, they're destroying the proper boundaries of the world. What, if, if I would take something unjustly, it, it doesn't only mean that the thing that I have I don't own, it means everything I have is not, is not really mine. Because the things that I'm supposed to own are supposed to be what I have earned, what I have been given, what God says is for me, and what you have is supposed to be yours. And when you break that boundary, the whole thing falls apart. That's why it says there are different kinds of people. And there's four kinds of people, it says. There are those that say, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. And that the sage say is an evil person because his eye looks and says everything I'm trying to subsume into myself. That person's evil. There's a high level, the righteous person, that I don't get to do what the person says. Listen, what's yours is yours. And what's mine, I look to share with you. Not, not that you take it, because, but I look to give because it's crucial. One of the switches in life is to try to change. We're all naturally takers. We take. That's what we do. When we're babies, when the baby is, you know, uh, one day old, it doesn't say, oh, my mother is tired. Maybe I shouldn't cry now because we are born to this world as takers. We want a nurse. We want a nurse. The job in life is to become a giver. That's why in Hebrew, the word giving is the same word as ahava, as love. Yahiv is to give. Hav is to give. Same word as to love. Why is that? Because we make a mistake. We think the people that I love is what I get. I, that's our natural state. The deeper meaning is, is that as I give to someone, I invest in someone, I love them more. That's why the child that you're working with and it's so difficult at a certain point you feel tremendous love because you've taken yourself and invested it in the other person. So there are those that all want to take what I, they get from you. There are those that say, listen, I, I, you know, you're, you have yours. I don't want to take your things. It belongs to you. But I want to find a way that my can be, can be yours too and I can give you. Those are two. Now, there's two other types of people. This one's a very tricky one. This one is a little bit like in America today. It says, mine is mine and yours is yours. Now, what is that? Is that a good person or a bad person? So the conclusion is that person is two different explanations. One is called he's an average person because he doesn't take what doesn't belong to them. Yours is yours, mine is mine. Another explanation is this is called the trait of Sadr. Because you still, if you if 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 you're so separate from other people that theirs is theirs and yours is yours, it's good, you have boundaries. But if you're not trying to help people at all, that that's, could be a very dangerous quality. And then there's the fourth category of people that say, what's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. Now, what do you call that? That's the big movement today in the world. And that's the root of the theft problem that's happening in America. Because it's not really yours, it belongs to everyone. It belongs, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, okay, it's, it's not really, not really you, don't, you don't really own it. So yours is my mind, yours. What is that called? The Talmud says that's called an ignoramus, a fool, a fool. 
a person that doesn't understand the boundaries. Once I break the boundaries and what's yours is not yours, then what's mine is not mine either anymore. And that's why the idea of, of theft is not, doesn't mean don't go rob a, a bank, of course not. But it means to understand that another person has their value. They are a separate entity from you and you must respect that and everything that's in their orbit because the things you own are really meant for you. God is giving you things in the world to accomplish with what he's giving you. It's not random. If you have something, th this means this is relevant to who you are as a person and what you need to accomplish, both in terms of your body, your, your, your qualities, and in terms of your possession. And therefore, the commandment, no, the, the commandment not to steal is not just a question of doing a terrible act of theft. It's an encroachment on another person's space in any way that you don't recognize and respect that theirs is theirs and it's not you. People want to just expand themselves. I want if I want every, but that's not what it is. There's another person. And once I respect what is theirs is really theirs. And I, like Joseph says, Joseph says, how could it be relevant to me? Joseph, this is, I want to hear this. Joseph did not have a desire for another man's wife not only because he controlled himself in, in the illicit relations area, which he did, but it was not his world. How could it be? It's not, it's not mine. It's not for me. And that is a crucial understanding because the world can't function according to the system that's being propagated in the world right now. Right now, they're trying to break the boundaries here, which is they call it socialism, whatever they call it. It's breaking boundaries. And when you break those boundaries, what you own is not yours either anymore because everything is, it has that taste of no, of, 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 of no guidelines towards who it is. It's a crucial fundamental, why this is one of the seven no hard laws, a crucial way the society can function, not just not to steal, but not to encroach in any way on someone else's situation. You know, don't cut the line because you realize the other person, his time is valuable, her time is valuable. And, and if you don't care about that, then, then you're disregarding their place in the world. And then there's no place in the world for anybody. So when we respect it, and we, and we honor it, and we give people theirs and say, this is yours, not mine, then the world becomes a place where everyone can now say, this is relevant to me. And then there's ability to go and to give because we own what is ours and others own what is theirs. And then we can have a real connection to someone else and build something together because everyone is in their proper world and they understand the value of what they have and what the other has. Okay, that's my idea on, on the problem going on in America, what the root of it is, and the Noahide commandment of being very, very careful not to transgress boundaries of things that are not meant for us. Okay, I'm going to open it up to questions on that, on this commandment, or on anything else that we'd like.